Hello, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Goldmaking, presented by Darkshore Capital. My name is Andrew, and today is April 26th, 2021. We're going to start right off with the weekly stand-up. I've got a few different things this week. So what I've been doing since the last episode, got my Keystone Master achievement completed, so very happy about that. That's a non-gold-making related goal out of the way, so we can focus more on gold. I'm doing some more BOE flipping, made a few purchases, made a few sales. I've been trying out some Mythic Plus boosting for gold. We're not going to get too in-depth to it right now, but I will warn you, this is a topic that's going to be coming up in my content for a long time, for a little while. I have a lot to say about it, but I'm just getting started, so I don't want to jump the gun. And lastly, I've been doing a bit of leveling in my other series that I've got going on right now, a WoW Hedge Fund Let's Play style series. I need a new character, so I've been doing some leveling on a warrior. For the next week, I'm going to continue focusing on the BOE flipping. It's been very profitable. I'm going to be exploring some new gold making methods as well. I got a little tip recently about potentially looking into... BOEs from not last expansion, but the previous expansion, uh, Legion, apparently there's still a market there and still some, some way to make some gold. So we're going to be taking a look at those, hopefully. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, Mythic Plus boosting, I'm pretty, well, as you'll see later on, I'm pretty bullish on this at the moment. So definitely going to be going to continue to try and do some of that. Biggest uh, things in the way right now, so the same time and profession slots, which is what the leveling is for. All right, so market update is still under development as I was unable to do any <laughs> development work over the last week. But, uh, you know, I figured let's throw up the token price here uh, while we're still waiting on that. So as of right now in the U.S., token is sitting at 153,000 gold. In the EU, it's 230,000 gold. This has gone up a little bit since the expansion started. I haven't been following it too closely, but uh, there's actually a an add-on called Titan Panel. You, <laughs> Any of you old school players may remember it back from vanilla in early days, but I've actually come to really like that add-on quite a bit. There's a plugin for it that shows you the current token price. So when I'm playing the game, I just always have the token price up there. So I just kind of pay attention to it and notice it going up and down, and it's steadily been on the rise, which is interesting. All right, so news, obviously, we're still waiting on patch 9.1. Everyone's waiting with bated breath for it to come out. There's a lot of excitement around it. Not a whole lot when it comes to professions. Uh, there was something about Mega Soul Ash, which is, of course, relevant to legendary crafting. Uh, again, not a whole lot really known, uh, com like, concretely as to how that's going to work in the next patch. Uh, all we know is something's changing. That's all I'm willing to commit to at the moment. Uh, there's a few new profession items. None of them are terribly interesting. Uh, the only real like money maker, big time money maker that I see at the moment is the Vantus room for the new raid, but that's that's nothing new or exciting. If you're an inscriptionist and you have access to raids, uh, you're probably going to want to look into that. There's some toys and some other cosmetic things, uh, which I'm sure we'll be able to make some money, but it's not... Uh, certainly not going to be big bucks. It's not going to be a crazy profession shakeup like there was in BFA, at least. We're apparently going to get flying in 9.1. Came as a bit of a surprise to myself, and apparently it's going to be available within one week with enough effort. And then uh, lastly, I did want to mention um, some news from the last week. There's going to be a reward for completing uh, basically like the plus 20 Keystone Master. So if you don't know right now, if you complete all... 15 mythic pluses in time you get a, a reward called keystone master it gives you a mount and a title actually i'm not sure if it's a title right now but it gives you a mount that's the important part they're going to add another level at level 20 which is going to give you a teleport to each dungeon this is very similar to how challenge modes worked in mists of pandaria and in warlords of draenor and let me tell you man those those teleports still come in handy every now and again on the one character i have them on the, the wad one. Didn't play during the mop. So I'm actually really looking forward to that. And that actually, uh, again, still alluding to my mysterious Mythic Plus boosting, I think that's going to potentially be... Uh, that's that's something that we got to keep our eyes on because, yeah, selling a full 20 Keystone completion, that's going to be a lot of gold. I'll tell you right now. A lot of gold. Because that's going to be a tough one to carry. But I digress. 
This week, I did want to talk a little bit about something that's near and dear to my heart, (laughs) as you might know, which is uh, flipping VOEs and why flipping promotes a healthy economy. This isn't so much of a guide as more of a, uh, not quite a rant, but just, you know, why is it okay that we're doing these BOE flips? Oftentimes, you'll see, or goblins will get a bad name for, you know, trying to just be greedy and make money for themselves. And while I'm not going to deny that that does exist, I do want to talk about what are the actual values of somebody buying low and selling high. And there's a lot to it that kind of goes unnoticed unless you really stop and think about it. So the main thing, the main theme of flipping and why it's good is around liquidity. If you don't know, um, liquidity basically just refers to how easily it is to turn something, a good, into cash. And historically, you think of cash, or in our case, gold, as the most liquid thing. You can buy whatever you want for gold. Items, carries, armor, whatever it is. Gold is the most useful currency to have because you can get anything with it. So items like BOEs or transmog pieces, right, they have a value as well. But oftentimes it's not so easy to convert, say, that crafted transmog piece that's worth allegedly six figures into actual gold. Yeah, it's going to take time. Anytime you hear anyone talking seriously about the transmog market, they're going to be telling you you're in for the long haul. When you're flipping things, you're sort of shortcutting that. So by providing liquidity, what I mean is if somebody posts like really needs money right now, like say they have that hundred thousand dollar, sorry, hundred thousand gold BOE that they got, they need that money right now. They can't wait around for two weeks for that thing to sell. Well, if they put it up for fifty thousand gold, well, that'll sell right away because somebody will see that and be willing to trade the time it takes to actually turn a profit for the, the profit. Like you, you're basically, you're literally turning time into money as the flipper. And in exchange, the person that needs the gold right now gets access to that gold. They don't have to wait around. They they value their time much higher than the person doing the flipping. Which kind of makes, like, I don't know if that really makes sense. But that's what's happening. You're making a market. You're giving people the opportunity to cash in their item that takes a long time to sell for gold right now. And that's important because... You know, some people are willing to, like, give up a little bit of that that money in order to just have the money now. Because, you know, for us goblins, we might not have an immediate need, but for a raider or for a Mythic Plus runner, they might be broke and they might need consumables right now. So, in theory, if this is all working well, it just gives them, you know, another tool to be able to have access to cash. So, the next time you think about or hear somebody talking about how goblins are greedy and flipping is evil, just remember, we are actually providing a useful service. And then I did actually provide here, I did, I remembered, I wrote a a little guide about BOE flipping, uh, which touches on the subject as well. Uh, It's posted on my head. I'll leave the link in the various descriptions. Uh, You can go read up on it. It's, I think it's a lot of really important, timeless information. Um, I'll probably be updating it for some legion or sorry not legion (laughs) i'm stuck in the past obviously for some shadowlands content um boes and such because things are a little bit different this time around for shadowlands so the guide will need some updating but yeah if you feel like giving it a read uh it's just something that i kind of wrote and i'm I'm pretty proud of it because i i've obviously spent a decent amount of time flipping boes and i feel like i know a decent amount of it so there you go that's my (laughs) end rant on boes and why providing BOE flipping services is actually a good thing for the economy overall. All right, let's get off my high horse and just talk about what's bullish and bearish right now. So the only real big change, only change to this sheet this week is boosting. Now I mentioned earlier, I mentioned it a few times and I keep mentioning it about boosting Mythic Plus for gold. And I wanna be very clear, this will go without saying forever, but like it's only for gold, okay? If you're boosting for RMT stands for uh, real money transactions. No, that's that's not okay. We're not we're not condoning that. Um, but man, I I managed to run my first Mythic Plus boost for gold, and not only was it 
a great way to make 20k for running a 12. It was probably one of the most enjoyable dungeons I've ever run. Uh, smooth, good strategies. The people I was running with were all very happy. The person buying the boost was very pleasant. I don't know. Like I said, I'm going to have a lot more to say about this coming once I get a little more experience, but everything that I can see, um, gold boosting gets a really bad name from a certain part of the, the World of Warcraft community, and I really wish it didn't. And now, granted, the excessive spam that you get in trade chat as a result of it, I, I totally understand. Like, that's, that's ugly. It's annoying. I wish there was a solution to that. But man, everything else, boosting's great. I'll come out and say it. You can hate me for it, but... I think it's really a good thing overall. And uh, yeah, so far, nothing but good things to say about it. Yep, so still um, bullish column. We've got the evergreen gold making legendary base materials, callings slash mission tables stuff. Probably prepping for that because there's inevitably going, to, inevitably going to be something useful to come out of that. Uh, still pretty bearish on the easy crafts. Actually, I did want to mention something about this. So uh, if you'll remember in Battle for Azeroth, when they introduced the big uh, profession overhaul, it wasn't, wasn't an overhaul, big profession like update where you got to like go on a quest and get an item for your profession. Most of them were just pretty whatever, but the enchanting one was incredibly important. Well, it was required pretty much if you were going to do any kind of enchanting shuffling. And then the more egregious uh, offender for what I'm going to talk about was the alchemy one where uh, you got, I think it was like every 10 hours or something, you got a random potion that gave you some increased effect when you were crafting your, your alchemy profession stuff. It wasn't always guaranteed. You couldn't choose what it was. But whenever you got the flask one, which basically just made you proc more flasks, uh, that's when you had to make your flasks. And this is like... So right now I'm bearish on easy crafts because just about everyone has pretty easy access to just make flasks. This took that to a whole nother level where like not only was it easy to get access to the flasks, it dropped the price even more because enough people had access to this thing that made it more efficient. And if you didn't have access to that or the had put the time and the effort into like building up your, your stockpile of herbs, like you were just completely SOL when it came to trying to break into that market. So I'm worried that they might do that again, this expansion. Uh, just as a quick aside, if you haven't heard um, Preach of Preach Gaming is going to be interviewing Ian Hazakostas, the lead designer of World of Warcraft, and he asked for a bunch of questions so they could ask him about them. I did pose a question to ask, like, hey, Ian, do you consider any of the profession items that you added in BFA to be a failure, specifically this alchemy one that really ruined alchemy for a lot of people? Uh, you know, I'm not, not holding my breath as to whether or not it'll be asked, but maybe they'll address it. I, I would like to know just a little bit more about what they're thinking when it comes to professions going forward. It's very common for people in the gold making community to uh, be so upset or disappointed that professions don't get enough love and yada, yada, yada. And yeah, like whatever, sure. But ultimately, like, I'm not really here to tell you what should or shouldn't happen with professions. I just kind of want to know because there's always going to be a way to make gold. Professions historically have always contained some way to make gold, but the more you know, the more knowledge you have, the more power you will have to make decisions about what you should be spending your time to do to make the most gold. So if we're going to get more items like that, I just want to know ahead of time. That way I don't sink a bunch of time and effort into getting alchemy and uh, have it become a just ridiculously competitive market that's not worth the time and effort. So there you go. That's what I'm thinking about as far as easy crafts go and looking forward to the next patch and the rest of the expansion. All right. Got a few questions here today. We're gonna dive right in. Number one, what is the best zone to farm while waiting for an M plus group to form? This is a question asked from Reddit, there'll be a link. It's a good question. So, and I'm not really here as an expert on where the best place to just farm is. Uh, you can look up plenty of guides or just go do it because ultimately like you're gonna make some money by doing it. What I will say, and what you should do, is if you're not an engineer on the character that you're running Mythic Plus seriously on, you need to become an engineer right now because, mainly for this question, you get access to the wormhole generator, which if you don't know, gives you on, I believe, a 15 minute cooldown, a 
portal to every zone in Shadowlands, including Oribos, including the Maw. So what I mean by this is you can go farm whatever you want to go farm, and then when the group's ready to go, you pop the wormhole generator, you get to the zone, and you fly to the thing. Like, yeah, you could be that guy that always waits for the summon, and like technically that be would be more efficient, but in my opinion, you're going to be having a better time overall. If you're the guy going to the stone to summon the, the lazy person who's off uh, farming herbs or whatever in, in Gorgrond or something. So that's my suggestion. The best zone to farm while waiting for an M plus group to form is get engineering. Next question. How do I take the next step and turn a few million into tens of millions? Another question from Reddit. Link will be available if you want to go see the question. Yeah, so pretty much you just start uh, buying bigger things. Um, you know, if you're flipping herbs, one herb might make you a couple gold. If you're flipping legendary bases, one legendary mace might make you a couple thousand gold. If you're flipping LFR BOEs, you might make 10,000 gold. Uh, but you keep going up and up and up, you know, work your way up through the BOEs to the 226s that are going for a quarter million that's going to start making you more and more gold. And then past that, you know, like I've heard TCG mounts are pretty good to flip. Yeah, so pretty much my answer here is not going to be a specific one, but just look to the next most expensive thing because that's really how you scale up in World of Warcraft when it comes to making millions. The other option is uh, get more accounts and do multi-boxing things. Obviously, I know there's a whole situation right now with... Uh, uh, what was it, IS Boxer, uh, not really being a thing anymore, but you know, there's still ways to scale up your gold making ability with multiple accounts, whether it be just having a, a second account to check the auction house at all times, and you can't really do sniper like you used to, but similar stuff, or uh, cross go across the other realms, uh, look into battle pets, try to do some crossover battle pet arbitrage. I'd be careful with that though, it's a pretty saturated market in my experience. I've been out of the game a little while there, but whew, man, it seems like everyone and their mother was doing that just because it was so accessible. So yeah, just look to uh, what's the next big thing because the more money you have, the more money you can invest and the more money you can invest, the bigger your return on investment is going to be. That's that's really it. Next question. Besides the fell steel stuff, is there a market in old blacksmithing? This is a question from Twitter. Link will be available if you want to go check it out. Absolutely. There is, are plenty of crafts from old blacksmithing that are still making lots and lots of gold. I've done quite a bit of transmog crafting for blacksmithing. Uh, yeah, stuff from vanilla, stuff from uh, all the expansions. There's going to be something that's going to sell for a decent amount. Off the top of my head, there's the sulfur on hammer from vanilla. There's all the dark iron pieces from vanilla. I would definitely look into those because there's a certain... Uh, level of difficulty, not, not really difficulty, but like you can't just go smelt dark iron ore. You gotta like do the quest at Blackrock Depths and then like physically go to Blackrock Depths to smelt the stuff and then to craft the stuff, you gotta go to the anvil in Blackrock Depths. Okay, it's it's not so easy, right? So like there's some barrier to entry. So that stuff will take, um, let you command a bit more of a premium when you sell it. And it looks pretty cool, I think. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of uh, market to be had in vanilla things because classic vanilla like people like that i like that maybe i'm biased who knows uh tbc stuff uh as you mentioned fell stuff that or fell steel stuff that's definitely um a big one uh the long sword comes to mind of course wrath is maybe not as exciting when it comes to blacksmithing things there's plenty of stuff in cataclysm you can look into the molten front dailies and reputation uh, to gain access to the patterns that come from there Again, this is just like a, a time-gated thing that not everyone has access to, so those pieces will command a bit of a premium as well. Um, for Mr. Pandaria, you can always do the... Um, it's not really a transmute, but it's like the lightning steel and the, the other associated daily cooldown stuff that unlock the weapons. Uh, I don't know, maybe be careful with the weapons uh, that come from those. There's like a, a, a three-tiered weapon situation in Mr. Pandaria. And they do sell for a lot, but I do think a lot of people get into those because it's kind of like a, I don't know, it's just like a thing, right? Like a lot of people know about it. So yeah, there's plenty of plenty of options. There's, there's a mount from Legion. Uh, you can just go into Nighthold and get it off of Tychondrius. 
Uh, yeah, you do have to farm quite a bit of Blood of Sargeras, which again is another time gated thing. So another opportunity for you to leverage your time into money. So yeah, there's lots of stuff, lots and lots of stuff. I would recommend, and I'll find and leave the link in the description to check out the, the WoW Recipes website that basically shows you what recipes you're missing. This is an excellent tool to figure out what you should go uh, farm because I believe this new iteration of it will still show you where you can get the recipes. Uh, yeah, so you can just go go farm them. It's good stuff. Oh, and sh yeah, I, I can go on and on about this. We're going to leave it there for now. Next question, final question. Quick thoughts on the current professions. Everything feels like a soulless husk to me. No charm to any gear professions, etc. Another question from Twitter. Uh, yeah, like I said earlier, I don't really have any strong opinions about like whether or not professions are good enough from a gameplay perspective. I've always really enjoyed just gathering a bunch of recipes and crafting things and figuring out which crafts people are willing to pay a bunch of money for and which ones they're not. As long as they just keep making them and keep doing profession things, I, I'll i be happy. Because like to me, it's not so much... <laughs> I hate to say it, like the gameplay aspect of it, but like kind of the meta game aspect of it. Like what's figuring out like what's gonna make me money. That's the part that I I find really interesting. And I'll be honest, I haven't really explored too much of the current uh, expansion professions for that yet. Um, I'm sure there'll be something, and I'm sure there is something. Um, you know, I made a little bit of gold with alchemy. Made a little bit of gold with cooking early on. I don't know. Yeah, and, uh, and I know, you know, the 9.1 thing keeps getting brought up. Like, they're not really adding a ton, at least as of yet. But, uh, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. The legendary stuff is interesting. I, I am kind of looking forward to, like, diving a little bit deeper into that. Though, I heard something about experience and, like, learning things. So, I don't know. That might not be for me. But once I get to the point where I'm going to start considering it, then we'll see. It's kind of a cool idea, though. Like, leveling up profession stuff. I don't know. It's not my area of expertise. I just craft the stuff. I don't design it. End of question. <laughs> All right. And on that note, that'll wrap it up for the week. I want to thank everyone for watching and for listening. Again, my name is Andrew here for Darkshore Capital. If you have any questions about gold making or otherwise, you can, of course, reach out to me on Twitter. The handle is at Darkshore Cap. You can leave a message on the YouTube uh, video if you have any questions comments or concerns or you can then send me an email darkshorecapital at gmail.com is where to find me there well, thank you ever so much for watching go check out the let's play series on youtube if you haven't already there'll be a new episode coming out on wednesday and yeah that's going to do it for me happy gold making everyone we'll see you next week